minute. <laughs> the keys to running a successful restaurant. Great food, great ambiance, great staff. But today, people judge your restaurant before they ever walk in the door. They won't give you a chance unless you have amazing online reviews. I'm Andrew Gruel, and I run Slapfish Restaurant with my best friend and chef, Anthony Dispensa. Andrew has a brilliant mind for business. And Anthony can whip any kitchen into shape. With over 20 plus locations in development worldwide, Anthony and I utilize online reviews to create the perfect experience. One bad review can sink your business by up to 20%. Which could mean the difference between staying open and shutting your doors down forever. For restaurant owners across the country, it's really difficult to distinguish between the truth and what's just online trash talk. Tonight, this was a overcooked, fatty piece of meat. Will Efren and Maria listen to their biggest online critics and take their steakhouse from dirty and drab Oh my God. That's human hair. This can make somebody sick to elegant and timeless. Your regulars are dying off. Come on, guys, let's wake up. Or after 48 years, will they close their doors forever? I think it's time. Culver City, California has been a hotspot for the entertainment industry since the 1920s. With big movie studios and a young professional crowd, all this makes for a very hip, upscale restaurant scene. Dear John's is an old-fashioned steakhouse in Culver City that's been around since 1967. According to online reviews, the restaurant is in dire need of updates. After averaging all the online review sites together, Dear John's is suffering from a terrible rating. The reviewers are saying the food is outdated, old-fashioned, and downright inedible. They should probably just call it the rib. There's nothing prime about it. Who seriously eats prime rib in 2015? The shrimp cocktail looked like it was a display from last night, but the goblet that it came in looked like it was from 1972. They also say the ambiance is dreary and confusing. And the wait staff is non-existent. There was nobody eating in there, and I still had really slow, terrible service. It was like WTF. These issues are leaving customers angry. They're going home and writing bad reviews about Dear John's. The quality of the food at Dear John's was a slap in the face. The ticket size at the end of the meal, well, that was a need of the groin. So the manager, Efren, has reached out to us to appeal to his mother, the owner of the restaurant. Dear John's used to be such a profitable restaurant, especially in the 60s and the 70s. But within the last three, four years, we just heard we're not cutting it anymore, and we're losing monthly about $5,000. We're $40,000 in debt. Two years ago, my mother brought me in to help her out, and I thought that was great. I wanted to work with family. But I was just honestly met with resistance from the staff members. They didn't want any change. They were comfortable. Even our regulars, they didn't want change. I need new people to come and enjoy what we are at Dear John's. I feel my mother is in denial. The ways of the past isn't the way we need to do it now. If we keep going the way we're going, we're gonna end up closing our doors in like six months easily. I don't want her to lose her business. That's why I came on. So we're in town for four days, and we're gonna see if we can help Efren and Maria turn these online reviews around. Is uh, Maria Efren here? Yeah, they're back in the kitchen. Let me go get it for you. Great, great, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Anthony. Andrew. Andrew. We're here because you uploaded your plea, oh, and we're excited yeah. to work with you. We own Slapfish Restaurant Group. We've got multiple restaurants. We've got hundreds and hundreds of online reviews that we've had to address time and time and time again. Online reviews can be great for you. It's like free advertisement. And, and they can be bad as well. Tell me how you feel about your reviews. Some of those things I really don't believe. I mean, it's really getting me upset. First off, we've been here. We've actually eaten here, and we've had the food. And I'll tell you, the food it, and, so and the reviews think? are not that far off the mark. This is interesting, right? What's up with these chairs, man? You get service? What's going on here? Do we have a waitress, or what's going on with service? I'm, this menu looks like a... Uh, Why do they have frog legs on their menu? Presentation. Whoa. OK. Portobello fries. It's greasy. I don't taste the portobello. The prime rib, people come in here for it. There's no texture, man. To me, the steak tastes like grocery bought. I mean, the meat is just blah. The shrimp cocktail. This is $13.50 for this. 
That's pretty expensive. I'm not getting any flavor out of this. No. Everybody's writing about that online. Right, and all those were off the mark. You know, it's very hard for me to understand all the criticism that I've been getting lately. I'm killing myself. I'm doing everything that I can to make this work. From people to come and tell me I'm not doing it right. The there first is the step right is for you to understand that and there's truth it. in those reviews. And now we're on our last credit card, right? Now I know it. Because if you accept that, then you're going to be open and willing to change. What we're going to do is we're going to pay for everybody's meal. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to close the doors. And we're going to bring in a few people that are going to help us turn this restaurant around. See, Mom, this is what I've been telling you. This is what we need. We need to change. If Maria's serious about keeping Dear John's open, then she needs to listen to her online reviews. So Anthony and I have reached out to some of her most vocal critics to step out from behind their computer and say it to her face. I'm a graphic designer with a culinary background, so I have high expectations for restaurants. I'm Therese. I cook all the time. I go to farmer's markets, and I'm a dedicated, stubbornly discriminating foodie. I write a popular food blog, and my site gets 700 visitors a day. I like my food done right. I expect my food done right, and that's why I'm hard on restaurants. I really want to connect with my online reviewers, and I'm looking forward to talking to them. Honestly, my mother, how is she going to react to it? Because she's the one who has been denying these comments, and I'm the one who agrees with these comments. And so hopefully her and I will support each other through that moment. Guys, thanks a lot for coming back to Dear John's. This is your chance to come from behind the handle and say it to their face. We're all here today because you had a bad experience at Dear John's. Whether it was the food, whether it was the ambiance, whether it was the service. And whether you guys realize or not, I mean, you know, these are people who are working 20 hours a day sometimes. And your reviews can make or break their business. So might as well hear you and See what you have to say. OK. Who wants to, come on, who wants to stand up right now? Read a little bit of the review. There you there go. go. There you go. What there do you got? Go. What do you got? Uh, I got the shrimp cocktail, and it was really creepy. It looked like that scene from Beetlejuice. Wow, creepy shrimp, shrimp cocktail. The goblet is something that uh, old fashioned, old style. It's been here forever. I did try to change it once. Mm -hmm. um, try to make it on a different platter, make it look a little more modern. Uh -huh. um, and what happened? Resistance again. We have a lot of regular customers. They've probably been here since the restaurant opened, and they want it the way they always got it. Who here has had the prime rib? I didn't enjoy it very much. It tasted like it was frozen before. That really upsets me. Yeah, the prime rib was not great. I mean, you'd expect it would be prime rib, right? This was a unsatisfying, overcooked, fatty piece of meat. It was under-seasoned, and it just wasn't great, OK? Guys, what do you think of that? No, I feel embarrassed about it. I'm not going to lie. I hear the complaints on the meat. I know So it. why no change? Is this doesn't quick? seem like it comes as a surprise to you. No. Efren knows there's a problem. Maria is totally silent. So why isn't Maria defending her restaurant? I love a throwback restaurant, but this doesn't look deliberately throwback or vintage. Let's take a look at this place in the light of day, right? If grime was a color, this would be it. The smell in here smells like stale grease. Yeah. You got a dingy floor. The uh, table was set in that. It was dirty. It was dirty. No one greeted us from the door. We do feel that you need to make us feel welcome. You know, a menu that has frog legs and a barbecue burger and a shrimp cocktail, like, to me, that says that nothing's going to be fresh or well-made because you don't really have a focus. I would be very suspicious eating frog legs at a place that's not French or gourmet. Did you try them? Well, you know, as I said, I'm not going to oh, try just, something okay. where I don't know where frogs are coming you're from. Like I mean, you're commenting on something LA's that you desert. don't even know if it was good or not. It is absolutely absurd that you have frog legs on the menu. Frog legs are archaic, period. It is very hard not to take these comments personally from all these people. I first agreed what they were saying. And then I started getting defensive myself with what they were saying. It was hard for my mother to hear. You know, they were putting her on the spot. And I still want to support her. I don't want to feel she's alone. OK, you're saying he's right. You have customers who continue to come in here asking for frog legs, and we don't have them on the menu. And they're upset that we don't have them on the menu. So they're wrong? I'm beyond frustrated with Efren and Maria. A dish like frog legs is not going to bring in a younger clientele. They need a harsh dose of reality. Why are you spending so much time trying to keep your regulars when there aren't even enough regulars 
to turn a profit. You're, look, you're honestly, I gotta stop hearing about the regulars. You guys are losing $5,000 a month. Do you understand that? And you keep telling me, the regulars, the regulars. Your regulars are dying off day by day, one by one. These need to be your regulars. Honestly, the people that go online and write the reviews. You have to move with the time. If you don't move with the time, you know what? You're gonna close the doors down. And you need to put that in your mind. Do you wanna close your doors? Tell us, come on, tell us how you feel. Tell us, come on, tell us how you feel. I'm too upset, you know. Um, I feel that you guys are right. That's a good thing. And I feel that I need the help, you know, for this business to get better, to get better quality. Why are you guys holding so on so much for your older customers? Because the regulars tell us what we want to hear. Bam. Yeah, the regulars tell you what you want to hear, tell us and the online reviewers are going to tell you the truth, and yeah. you don't want to hear that. I want to ask everybody here, if we addressed what seems to be a lot of major principal points, would you come back and give this restaurant another chance? By a show of hands. Yes. Okay, they've given us the tools. Oh, Thank yeah. you guys so much for coming in. Honestly, we'll see Thank you in a you. couple days, all right? You know, I think Dear John's has some hope because if they deliver quality food, people will flock to it. I'm not sure that Dear John's can turn it around because they haven't changed anything for years, so why would they do that now? Efren and Maria, so we got a lot of good information today, okay? We did. Yeah. We got a lot. Pretty intense at the event. It's very intense, it and, that, and, and it, it, sometimes it's hard to hear, okay? But we're gonna touch on all this tomorrow. We'll see you in the morning. See you in the yes. morning. That was a lot to hear, wasn't it? Yep. We got a lot of work to do, my man. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Hey. Yeah? How are you? How are you? Good. Good to see you. Did you get some sleep last night? Today, Anthony and I are back at Dear John's to see if they're really ready to get this train wreck back on the tracks. So why don't you tell us about your experience, though? My experience has been at major hotels, uh, food and beverage management. So why didn't you take that experience and bring I did. those changes here? I did. This is one of the arguments we've had over and over and over again throughout the two years that I've been here. I'll say, like, this isn't good, or, you know, like, someone's not enjoying this. She goes, well, our regulars enjoy it, or the people who've been here enjoy it. They yeah, don't say stop anything. stop with the regulars, because the regulars yeah. are taking you down. I'll be honest with you, I got dragged down from the fight. Do you want to keep this a steakhouse? We do want to keep it yeah. a steakhouse. Good, Definitely. so then let's graduate from old to classic steakhouse with a nice modern feel. That's something that I agree with completely. Deep down, I feel like Dear John's can be a good steakhouse. So I'm all for sticking with that concept, but we need to transition from vintage train wreck to retro chic. If we stick to what you guys are doing, this place is gonna shut down. Doors are gonna close. So we need to go in there and change these items and, and, and go over them. Are you ready for the changes? I am ready, I am okay. ready. I have so many doubts about these two right now, it's scary. For this to work, for any of this to work, Maria needs to give her son the reins. He's got the experience, and then Ephra needs to grow some and actually take those reins. If these two things don't happen, this is just a waste of time. Anthony's gonna go in the kitchen with you, Maria. Okay. Efren and I are gonna go up front, and we're gonna deal with this service, and then we're gonna all circle back and talk about the ambience, okay? Okay. Sounds great. Right. But we think this place is really worth saving. So Anthony's gonna get the lowdown on those nasty looking portobello fries. When I ordered the portobello mushroom fries, I was really disappointed to see the batter was really thick and soggy. We had a lot of feedback on the portobello mushrooms, right? Yes. All right. Having a vegetarian option is a great idea for Dear John's. It's an original take on French fries, and it could be making them a lot of money, but their version is bringing them bad reviews and losing them cash. I'd like to see your take on it, and, and we'll go from there. A decade ago, Dear John's used to have an executive chef. Now they have Arturo, who used to be a dishwasher, and now he's running the ship. Uh, now, hold on, what, what is this? Tell me what you got going on here. It's a chicken fry. Chicken fry, what is that, Maria? That's a chicken, that's a batter we have, you know. But that's what's a, in that's it, you know what's in it? No, you don't know. Okay, don't so know. why don't you tell me what's in it, just so I know. No, I don't know. You don't know either? No, I don't know. I don't okay, know great, all right, walk me through it. Arturo starts with a whole raw portobello mushroom, cut lengthwise, which are battered and deep fried. What Arturo's doing is he's taking the portobellos directly out of the fryer onto the plate. Oh, wow, directly on there. Putting oil on the plate and then actually putting this 
coagulated dipping sauce. Don't know what he's thinking here. Here you go, your turn now. I never tried my Pro Villa mushroom sauce. You've never tried? No, because I don't like mushroom sauce. What? She's never tried her own food? First off, I'll tell you right now, it's very uh, soggy. Soft. It's not crunchy, has no texture to it. I'm gonna take a picture of it from an online viewer standpoint, okay? Does that look like something you would put online? No. No. What about you? No, right? Uh, it's not fun. So if Dear John's is not in such financial ruin right now, we'd be looking for an executive chef. However, they don't have that money, so we're gonna try to coach Arturo. Most vegetables are 90% water, so the water leaches out of them, and that's why there's no texture to that mushroom. So what I do is bake the mushrooms before I batter them to remove all the water. And it actually keeps the mushroom cooked, and it gives the batter the crunch. So we're gonna just put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there, a little balsamic vinegar, right? We got a little salt, put that on top, fresh black pepper, and what we're gonna do is cook it in the oven at about 375 degrees. Adding all these seasons before baking ensures that you get flavor popping from every inch of the portobello, where Arturo was relying heavily on his mystery coating. And now we're gonna batter them. Classic batter, right? Just put them in the flour, dredge them off, right? Pop it in the egg wash. Then we're gonna dip it directly into the panko. Panko is Japanese breadcrumb that is much lighter than standard. It won't retain as much oil, so it always ends up much more crispy. So while those cook up, I'm gonna make a nice, rich, creamy sauce. We're gonna use borson cheese, buttermilk, chives, a little bit of black pepper, and you gotta hit it up with a little bit of lemon zest just to wake up that palate. So I have a transfer tray. I'm gonna take this. It's gonna go right into this towel, and it's gonna soak up any excess oil. Instead of the oil going on the plate, it's gonna go on your transfer tray, right? And now I can take these, and you can smell it. You can smell I am them. already smelling them. Yeah, it smells awesome, right? It looks great. So now I got my herb sauce, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lace it on top. For a quick garnish, a little fried parsley, okay? Why? Again, color. Come here, Maria, take a look at this. Come over I'm here. No, at come it. over here, look. Whoa. Look at oh that my on the God, camera. Look, how nice look at that. Oh, wow. That's what's gonna look like when oh it goes my online. God, yeah. Look how People cool are gonna that say looks. We gotta go and try that. Oh yeah. my God. Oh, wow. That's phenomenal. Maria, you take the honor there. You got some sauce on there, you got some lemon zest in there. Wow. You got some flavor. What wow. do you think? Well, you know what? For not liking mushrooms, these are great. I could eat those. It's not too crunchy, it's not too soft, it's just right. Nice. Arturo, copy, is this copy. something you can do? I like it, my friend. I okay. like it. Okay, good. Very nice. I like that. I like the I like I, like I, hear, I like hearing your attitude. I've got to say, after watching Arturo, I've got my concerns. He's a good guy, but it's clear as day he's never been trained as a chef. When we reopen, it'll be painfully obvious if he is the right man for this job. But first, if this steakhouse is gonna go from two forks to five forks, we have to address the quality of meat that they are using. Today, Andrew and I are gonna take Maria and Efren to the butcher shop. Hey guys, hey, how, how, are you doing? Doing? how are you doing? How are you doing? We Welcome. Made it. So we can show them the difference between grades of meat. So let's talk about the USDA grading system for a minute. So you've got your top of the line, which is prime, and then you have your choice, okay? Then you have your select, standard, your commercial, cutter canner, all the way down. But what grade meat are you using for the beef right now? Do you know? Choice. 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 Prime rib, right? This was a unsatisfying, overcooked, fatty piece of meat. The prime rib that we buy is retail. It's not something that we're making sure that it's a higher quality. And there should be a sense of pride because we're there working day in, day out. They may have been saving a few bucks buying choice grade meat, but they're losing money when people keep sending it back. If Efren and Maria commit to buying prime grade, they'll have a lot less waste and higher reviews. There's a fork for you, fork for you. So basically, we, we seared off this meat, simple seasoning, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic, a little fresh thyme in the pan. I mean, it cuts almost like butter, right? And that's because of the marbling in it, and it's a, it's a great piece of meat, and it's, and it's prime. It's not that choice, so why don't you guys dig in? So now, when Anthony talks about marbling, I mean, it's fat. Fat is flavor, kind of a primary point in, in cooking. And the fat on the inside of the meat, as it cooks, it insulates the meat, and that's what keeps it so tender. I gotta admit, it only took me about four chews to take that down. I know. I think with our prime rib, it takes about at least <laughs> seven, great. eight, yeah, nine, ten. And the most important thing is, do you taste the difference? Oh, no. 
Definitely. You taste the difference between what you were having yeah. and what you're having now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you want to switch from the choice to a prime grade, high quality steak? Well, I like the idea. You're, you're on, on, you, you're on uh, with this one? Yes, I am definitely on it. You are? <laughs> Yes. I this is a lot of yeah. changes. This is actually... a lot of changes. Yeah, man. It's Good changes, change. though. Good it's changes. It's a big change, but it's great change. And prime quality doesn't always mean high prices. Take the hanger steak, for example. Less mainstream, but just as flavorful as a ribeye. They call it the butcher steak because it's the one the butcher always takes home, and he keeps it. That's why you rarely see it sold retail. Yeah. Because it's the best steak. The, the hanger is my favorite. Me too. You too? Yeah. We're agreeing? We agree. You guys are agreeing? <laughs> no, no, you I mean, unanimous? Yeah. Can you imagine? We finally agree on yeah. something? The butcher really opened my eyes. I couldn't believe it. And the way it was done, it's so easy, but having good quality makes it taste great. I'm for the butcher. We are going to do some business. Now that we have a better direction for the food at Dear John's, it's time for me to turn my attention to the front of the house. You can have the best product in the world, but if your customer service is poor, you'll never succeed. I've dined here once, OK? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take everything from the social media reviews. Everyone's coming in. They're saying the service sucks. They're saying the service is inconsistent. People are waiting at the door. People are standing there. That's yeah. just what everybody is saying online. I, is, is this a surprise to hear that? I mean, honestly. I, I disagree. No. No, no. You disagree? I okay. disagree. So you think the service is good? I think our service is is certainly good. Well, what if it could like? be better, yes. Okay. It could be better. We've been doing it this way for so many years. Yep. See the other place that uh, we create our own pattern, how to work. We yeah. have a lot of regulars here. I know, I, I keep hearing that about that these regulars. Yeah, yeah. See, the regulars do run, especially during the daytime, they run him like crazy. So you're see, actually being managed by the regulars. Place. When I came on two years ago, I was like a bulldog. I came on and I was like, this okay. is the way it's going to be, this okay. is the way it has to happen. So that's passion. Yeah. You came on two years ago with passion. Yeah. Where I did it go? It went away because I got here. I kept hearing like, well, you need to calm down. You need to not let them, you know, they've been doing it for 15 years, Efren, you know, and they were resisting me. They're like, you know, I've been doing this. Why the hell is he telling me what to do? So basically, you're kind of letting everybody else run the show. They don't, they've been running the show. And for them, it's good enough. And I'm like, okay. so you're saying that your passion. It declined, man. It just went away. Or somebody took it away. Yeah. That's called micromanagement. Yeah. She's okay. micromanaging. So Maria doesn't allow Efren to run the show the way that he should. I would say no, no, 100%. I've already told her, I have a good staff, but I need to train them. And she needs to sit there and say, Efren's going to train you. And if you don't listen to what he tells you're shaking, you. You're shaking your head, yes, you agree? I'm thinking that that's maybe what it would take. She may not like it. She, she may fight it. You've been with her for how long? I know it's hard. Emotional. Off and on for about 12 years. Are you happy here? Yeah, I love it here. But are you ever afraid of losing your job with the fact that they're losing so much money every week? Mm -hmm. But are you ever afraid of losing your job with the fact that they're losing so much money every week? Mm. Dear John's restaurant in Culver City is losing $5,000 a month and has sunk to an average rating of only two forks in online reviews. The owner, Maria, brought her son Efren on two years ago to manage the joint, but she hasn't even given him total control yet. But maybe she needs to step back Yeah. and let him do what he knows how to do. If Maria steps back, will you all be able to open up to Efren? I think so. I, yeah, I that would be a problem. I would. How about Maria? How will that affect your relationship with Maria? You two have been working together for 12 years. I don't know that it would necessarily affect our relationship because we are friends, yeah. especially if you don't tell her that I said that. I don't yeah, know. That she should not she said that. Show. No, I'm kidding. This is what a breakthrough looks like, people. Now, if Efren can bleed, we can retrain the staff, and we can start to give our customers the right service and not just our regulars. Black. So, so we got we got step one. You greet the guest, okay? Number one, right off the bat, you establish that relationship. Step two, communication. It's all about then developing that relationship and communicating genuinely to the guests and you know? smiling, taking guys. their orders, smile. And like then, that. and then step three. <laughs> step three is your follow up. All right, this is the most important: is that you continuously touch your tables and you follow up. You always have to check in, even if the guest is sitting there and all they have is water on the table. You still go back and refill their water. You don't ignore them. It's not, oh, you've already paid. I'm going to ignore you now. I mean, do you understand what, what's going on here? <clears throat> I do understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. make the changes. My favorite part of this meeting is seeing Efren step up. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not there yet. But at least I know this restaurant has a fighting chance. Quality steak is the heart of a great steakhouse. But I've been thinking of some alternative dishes, and I think I've found something much better. 
than the frog legs. I call this a T-bone chicken, and it's basically a play on the steakhouse theme with the butterfly bone-in chicken breast. With classic Penzanella salad with Kalamata olives, heirloom tomatoes, cucumbers, and seared bread with a little bit of butter. Olive oil, garlic, and fresh thyme. What are we doing? We're basting the chicken with the butter and the herbs. Basically goes through it, also giving all that nice flavor from the thyme and the garlic. The bone of the filet draws the heat right through the breast, cooking it evenly. If you don't love that, you're nuts. On to the fun part, possibly. Right, we're going to talk about ambience here. I want to go through this room. Online, Dear John's got slammed for having a dirty, dated, and smelly decor. Let's take a look at this place in the light of day, right? If grime was a color, this would be it. Maria thinks that the ambiance is fine. Well, it's my job to show her that sometimes good enough is just not good enough. Lift your arm up, OK? Do you see this right here? Oh, you yeah. see this? Oh, yeah. Oh, my god. Look at that. OK, what's in there? A hair. That's human hair. I hope it's human hair, OK? That is a health hazard. Oh, god. I mean, do you, you're smiling. I'm hoping you're smiling because you're angry and you're about to lose it. I'm embarrassed. Because this is a problem. This is a problem. I can't believe she is still giggling. I'm not even getting through to her. Maria does not understand the gravity of the situation. So how can we improve? We have to be smart. We have to not try to take shortcuts. You know why you should feel terrible, honestly? Mm -hmm. is because this is a health hazard, number one. OK, I've got human hair here. This can make somebody sick. Oh, I mean, this isn't about just being lazy. This is about also creating a hazardous environment based on lazy decisions and not having passion for what you do. Oh, my god. A hair. That's human hair. That's disgusting. That's nasty. That's disgusting. Efren, what do you think? I feel horrible, and I've explained to my mom about, you know, someone's ordering a $25 steak. They're sitting on that chair, and they're looking at that chair going. So the steak is more expensive than the chair they're sitting in. Yeah. Oh, I feel so terrible. Mm -hmm. This is not what I wanted. It's very devastating to see that. I let it hit so bad. So you see this. Every single thing I'm pointing out right now, you understand, you see, you know. There's a pattern here. When you try and save money, and you get cheap in the beginning, you end up spending two or three times more money down the road. But think about how much money you probably lost because people came in, they sat in duct tape boots. You know, this time, I'm um, using my last credit card. It is time, and um, either we go for it or we close the door. And I don't think neither one of us want to do that. Let's do it right this time. Let's do it so that we don't have to fix it. You know, let's not buy the used car that we end up taking to the shop 500 times over. Let's do it yeah. right. Do you want to keep the boots? We want the boots. The boots are what I feel makes us a classic steakhouse and what people look for. Yeah, I us. think boots are part of, of Dear John's, a part of the classic uh, steakhouse. Actually, the boots are will put the focal point on the piano. I actually didn't know it was a piano bar. OK. Is that a piano? Yeah, is which is awesome, though. Yeah, but why would you not show that? That is what makes us different than a lot of other places, that we still have live entertainment. So if we want to make this a piano bar, this boutique has got to go, and we got to make this a focal okay. point. I think we're in the right track. How do you like, feel? Are you excited? The scary part is, OK, we have to make sure now that our employees follow our directions, and that's where you we're You let me lead them. Well, but I'm going to back you up. And because the moment I up. say something and they go running to you and complain, you just have to say, Efren is in charge. Yeah. Oh, my god, I can't <laughs> kick that one up. Wow. Look at Maria. She's getting up there, guys. Hey. Our plan is to, number one, ditch the dirt. Everything old in this place is going curbside, and the rest is going to get a good cleaning. We're going to focus on the focal points. In this place, it's the piano, and it's the fireplace. Both of these pieces are unique, and they shouldn't be cluttered and covered up. Creating a third focal point behind the bar will keep people comfortable and wanting to order more drinks. We'll keep a couple of the original pieces, but this place needs to stay classic steakhouse instead of classic house. I was scared of making some changes in Dear John's, but I feel like I have the guts to go and say, we're ready for a change. I want to keep going. There's still a lot of Maria to give. 
and I think I'm gonna succeed. While Efren and Marie are getting ready for the grand reopening, our crew worked overnight cleaning up and clearing out everything old about Dear John's. Maria may be down to her last credit card, but she is ready to burn a hole in that sucker to help turn this restaurant around. The old bar is getting a fresh coat of paint, and behind it, we are installing some custom-built shelves that will class the place up. Let me get this one, let me get this one, let me get this one. We've ditched the hairy chairs in favor of a more modern, cool, oh, hip notion of a Rat Pack-inspired classic steakhouse. That is nice. I'm extremely nervous. What if I don't like it? I am worried myself. This is the last amount of money we have, and we're putting in faith in, you know, Andrew and Anthony. And she's nervous, and I'm nervous. Look at this. Oh, my God. Wow. Hey, guys. Hi, Anthony. I mean, yeah. this is... Amazing. This mural will now catch the eye of passing traffic and direct attention to Dear John's. So we finished up the final touches inside. I think it's time. It's Can fine. we go in? Let's head in. in. Come on, let's oh, take let's a look. Let's do it. All right, let's... Ooh, finally, finally. I'm really nervous about this reopening tonight because so much is riding on this. I really hope that Efren and Maria can see the benefit of the update and getting a new crowd so they can keep their doors open. Oh, my God. Holy. <gasps> oh, look at the family. Oh, my God. This is great. Oh, my bar. My bar. The first thing you'll notice is the fully renovated bar area. I never incredible. thought this place could look like this. The artwork is actually a close-up of cigar smoke to evoke that retro Rat Pack vibe, but still with a modern touch. We put up new sconces. Yes, they're gorgeous. OK, they're clean. It's also very minimal. We've replaced the old paneling with some laminate flooring to make the look more rustic and masculine, and a host station with waiting area to enhance the guest dining experience. We kept your mirror, OK? Oh, yeah. And we moved it because we wanted to feature this beautiful mantle and fireplace. I mean, that's a focal point right there. We freshened up the booths with a gray tone and matching white tablecloths because classic steakhouse at this price point should have fresh linens and fresh cut flowers. When we came in here first, Anthony and I, we didn't even know that there was a piano back here. We thought, why are we missing out on this space, right? Rat Pack, Sinatra classic steakhouse and entertainment. So if I'm going to take a photo, this this is a beautiful <laughs> backdrop. Andrew, what we've done is we've graduated from a dive bar to a classic a steakhouse steak restaurant. Steakhouse. And you know what? We haven't even touched on the food yet. Let's get ready to show the online reviewers. <laughs> I want to yes. show them. For the grand reopening, we decided to keep the menu just as classic and as timeless as Dear John's, All right, with simple yeah, dishes that pack lots of flavor. Here we go. My God, look at that. So you had your prime rib, which was your signature dish. Not great response on that. Not to at be all. blunt, people didn't like it. Now, this is your new signature dish, the ribeye. That's awesome. Now let's move on to its meaty, delicious cousin, <laughs> the steak frites. The steak. Anthony, talk to us about this. All right, this. steak frites. All I can say is one of my favorite dishes, right? Classic dish. Everyone loves a steak with fries, and a hanger steak works perfectly. Not only that, we also use the hanger steak in another dish. A new take on a BLT with bacon, lettuce, tomato steak, and a fried egg. Well, with the egg on there, see, the great thing is it's really hot right now. Online, it's buzzworthy. You get that hot yolk that just oozes and goozes out of the sandwich, and it acts as its own natural sauce, and then it drips down across the smoky bacon, and you get the fresh tomatoes to wipe away that rich flavor of the egg, and all of it in one bite is like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In addition to the new and improved portobello fries, we've got a new take on the shrimp cocktail. Before, the shrimp cocktail was served in an ashtray. It looked like a <laughs> sea creature. And we weren't really getting that good of a response on the texture, the flavor, the feel. Yeah. Now, we've taken a whole new spin on this. Oh, I yes. mean, the flavor yes. by cooking no, it, it the will... shrimp well, in a seasoned I mean. liquid. And we added that seaweed salad just wow. for a little bit of finesse. Wow. We also have Anthony's special chicken T-bone on the menu. No more of those old frog legs. 
This is a signature dish. This is gonna go viral. And let's not forget about our sweet tooths, okay? <laughs> what do we always talk about? Upsell, upsell, upsell. Well, now you've got a dessert that you're gonna wanna upsell. It's fun, this is whimsical. This is something we all had as children. Just a great ice cream sandwich. High quality, desirable, crave worthy, photo worthy, online worthy steaks and dishes. All right, guys, well, you know what? Customers are gonna be arriving any minute now. This is what we've been working for for the past couple days. Anthony's gonna jump in the kitchen. He's gonna get things going and smooth with Arturo. All right, we're gonna hang here in the front of the house and we're gonna make sure we got our biggest smiles and our warmest welcomes on hand. Let's go, this right. is it, this let's is do big. It. Yeah, let's go. Oh my God, I have faith in you, Arturo, do it right. They're not both the same, yeah. Oh my, getting my butcher meat. We have to work on service tonight. We gotta to learn that menu, we have to learn what we're selling. Yeah. And we have to connect with the guests. We have to make sure that we are being warm. Good. You feel good? Because you wanted to be a great chef. This is your opportunity. OK, this is on you guys tonight. I got to prove it to her, my mom, that I can do this. You got to prove it to the online reviewers, most importantly. This All is right. your show. All right. Thanks, Thank bud. Thank you very much. How Hi. are you? Good. Thank you for coming back to Dear John's. I, Maria, is very excited to show all these critics that they were wrong. Wow. That looks beautiful. My name is Rolanda, and I'm going to be taking care of you. Oh, my right. gosh. I just noticed this wall. The steakhouse salad looks excellent. I think I like that. We have a wonderful, wonderful ribeye tonight. Fantastic. Hi. Every single person right now feels confident, and you feel that in the room. There's someone at the door. But they're There's doing communication they're doing going on. Really I saw it going well now, but let's see what happens when orders start coming in. And then I got a BOT cooked medium well and a ribeye cooked medium rare. OK. So we have a house salad. Maybe just a little bit, a little backed up yeah, in the no kitchen. Yeah. I'm noticing that people are waiting a long time for the food. Kitchen's getting backed up. I've got my concerns. Are you frying that to order? Dishes can't be going out like this, yeah? If this food doesn't come through fast enough and is sloppy and rushed, then we could really risk ruining everything we've worked so hard for. First off, guys, look at me. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. OK? First off, this looks like <laughs> Let's clean up before we start putting food out like because right now what you're doing is you have this whole place like chaos, and right now what's going to happen is it's going to go out to the dining room. Look, you got towels, towels, there's shit everywhere. Efren. Yeah. You got to take control of this kitchen because this is your restaurant. Okay, right? Anthony, I understand. Uh, if everyone wants to be a general manager, he's got to step it up and save this kitchen because it's sinking fast. You guys are dragging. Come on, guys, let's wake up. Efren, you got to take control of this kitchen. All right, what's going on with the entrees, though? We got to get this out. Yeah. This should be the last thing we're going to do. This should be the first thing you're working on, OK? He's getting backed up with the he entrees. He really is. He is, OK? So we got to pace you're it busy. out. OK? He should go put the neighbor on and go help Arturo. He needs your help. I know. He's okay. stuck back there. I know. The food is um, taking a while. That's, that's always okay. You own this room right now. Even if the kitchen falls apart, you own this. This is your restaurant. Sorry for the wait, OK? Oh. I have to apologize. We Brand new dishes, stuff. but I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. OK, Arturo, look, he's going to start helping you with the steaks. You need to start plating. Another drink? OK, we're going to need another ribeye. Okay. Take these on table three, OK? Set them up, that way they're ready to go. Problems are always going to happen, but Efren and Maria are really starting to take control, and that gives us a lot of hope for this restaurant after we leave. Honestly, it's probably like the freshest shrimp yeah. cocktail dish I've had. Thank you so much. Really? And then wow. the steakhouse salad. This is pretty. <laughs> what do you think? Very good. It's a winner, right? Decor here is so much better. I mean, there were some things worth salvaging, and you know, they kept the nice, warm color tones. Yeah, it's a place where you know I would take someone 
Or, yeah. You know, this sounds weird, but I wouldn't. I don't think I would have before taken anyone here. I definitely see myself heading back to Dear John's. My first impressions of Dear John's with the frog legs and the antique prime rib and the weird things on the menu, I gave them two forks. But seeing their attempt to modernize the menu, I give them a five fork rating. I rated it a two out of four forks. Okay. So far tonight, I would give it five out of five. Right on. What do you think about tonight's meal? That's 100% better. Last time, I think I gave it two forks. Now I would give it four and a half. Four and a half forks? That's not. That's yeah, not yeah. bad. The single most significant improvement that I noticed with Dear John's was the quality of the ingredients. The beef itself went from a D to an A minus. How you doing? Hi. Hey, come on, scoot on over. I'm coming in. Oh. I'm coming in. Initial impressions? The shrimp cocktail was 1.5 to 5. OK, so overall improvement. 1.5 to 3.5 to 4. All right. The service was Definitely more attentive than the first time I came, but there was a lot of waiting time in between you. courses. You guys come here often, huh? Um, we are regulars. Uh, we're so happy that this place is turned out so spectacular. Well, I think okay. you, maybe, you, did a, you did a great job. You did a great job. job. We love you very oh, much wow. for doing really this did. for them. OK. So what happened tonight? I'm busy, my friend. I know you know. Yes, sir. No, but you you've, been, you've been busy before. I'll get you help. Oh, I'll get you help. But, uh, okay. I want to Okay. All right. Thank you. Maria, um, Efren, walking around the room tonight, they're all going to be giving you two, three, four more forks I than mean, what they originally gave you when they came be at the least first more than time. Two, right? You know, you struggled a little bit in the kitchen, yeah. you know, but you pulled it off. You went yeah. in there, you took control. And we're really proud of you. No, now we're walking away, so this is now your time. I feel this place is going to be packed. And it's a good feeling. People are going to be wanting to be part of Dear John's. Yeah. This is what I see for Dear John's. This is their future. It's exciting. Thank you so much. I'm Thanks, so man. Happy. Thank you for yeah, thank, thank, you, thank you for letting us in. Okay, take thank care you guys. of you. Take care. Are you happy um, with your restaurant? I, um, oh, honey, I don't even want to cry again. I just this is amazing. You deserve it. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you for everything. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Anthony. I just wanted to say thank you for the outstanding job you did at Dear John's. You know, when people walk in Dear John's, I mean, their first impression is like, wow, am I in the right place? The T-bone chicken has been a great hit. People are just amazed at the taste of it. Well, our Friday and Saturday nights are slam pack. We have two seatings. All in all, it's been a great, great increase for business for us, and we're up at least 25% when we always had like two forks. Really, I'm seeing four forks across the board when I'm looking on their online reviews. The staff is really listening to me now. They understand my role. Arturo's still with us. He's, he's been doing really good. He's, he's following the recipes. So I'm proud of him. I feel very confident. I mean, and I think it's gonna be a great success.